Today we're going to start the DIY install of my Honeywell ERV. This is the VNT 5150E 1000. It's 150 CFM cubic feet per minute. I've done several other videos about my house. It was built two and a half years ago. We use spray foam. It's causing lots of problems because of high humidity and ventilation there's no airflow this ERV is going to go in the attic I have a two-story house and I have two HVAC units one for the main floor one for upstairs all the duct work is run through the attic so I'm going to put the ERV in the attic I think I'm going to have good access to run all the duct work I am going to install this completely separate and independent from the HVAC units if you look at the directions there's several ways that you can tie in your ERV into the existing ductwork, and I guess the installation would be faster. I don't want to do it that way. A lot of times these HVAC units are not going to be running. My understanding, if I tie it into this ductwork, these blower motors have to run to help move the air around. But I'm choosing to do a totally separate install. The installation instructions for this ERV say to put it as close to an outside wall as you can. So that's gonna be right here. That's the outside wall. Uh, the cool thing, this unit here, it's got straps where you can hang it up. So I think I'm gonna hang it up right here. This is the outside of the wall where I'm going to hang the ERV. So that's my attic up there. That's the wall that the ERV is gonna be just on the other side of that wall. I've got all these exhaust vents. So these are bathrooms. These three are bathroom exhaust and there's one way down here that is the dryer vent this middle one right here that is for my master bath where the shower is I'm gonna be getting rid of that because that exhaust vent it's gonna be tied into the ERV so I'll pull this out I'll make the hole bigger and this will be where the the old the stale the contaminated air is pulled out of the house right there the ERV also pulls in fresh air from the outside I'm gonna put the fresh air somewhere up here now that's going to be about seven feet away the directions say that the exhaust and the intake they need to be 72 inches i think that's six feet so i'm going to have about seven feet between the two back up in the attic we're going to open this box up pull the erv out and go ahead and get it hanging right here all right we got the uh, power cord here this is uh, like a drain line for humidity or condensation whatever we've got some big zip ties to put the duct work on there we got these straps this is what I'm gonna actually hang it up with well there it is we got a little control box here a couple of ports on this side got two more over there this is the side that's gonna be facing me because this is the side that I open up to clean the filters Sometimes it helps to actually read the instructions before you get started. I already got my first problem, so I wanted to use these lag bolts. They look pretty thick and sturdy. The straps have this little eyelet. These are too big. They will not go through the eyelet. So I opened up the uh, bag of stuff that came with it. It actually comes with four screws and some washers. They call them hanging screws. They seem very small, so if that's what they supply, then they've got to be strong enough to hold this thing up. The directions also say to make this thing lighter and easier to hang, you can open it up, and you can take this core out of here. These are like these little collar things that go on the end to hook the duct work on. Now we just have a big empty box I don't have anybody to help me hold this up, so I'm gonna have to improvise here. We got this uh, random little shelving cabinet unit here, whatever this thing is. This is the box the uh, ERV came in, and now I have $1,100 sitting on top of this sketchy, wobbly little get up here. So far, so good. We got the first two straps. We got all four straps secured up here. I'm pretty happy with that. I think we got it level. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and put this core back in the middle of it. By the way, this is a good height. I'm gonna have to, I think every three months or so, you have to do maintenance on this. You gotta check, there's 
the filters, two little air filters, and then the core. You have to clean it or change them. We got the core back in here. So these little filters here you have to clean. I think the core you have to pull out and clean it or replace it. So all of this, you gotta check it I think every three months. Yeah, it says right here four times a year or as needed. Now we got the ERV hanging, we need power. This is gonna require a dedicated circuit, nothing else on this circuit. So we got this uh, cord here and it plugs it right into the top pretty easy I need an outlet so that's what I'm gonna do next I've got my outlet box in now I had to uh, make a little channel here in the foam just pretty easy just dug it out with my hand the wire runs down here and goes over there and it goes down the wall over there I'm just using these uh, staples to secure the wire there's a gap right here. This is my laundry room right here. And because the uh, dryer vent, you can see the dryer vent, because the dryer vent is so big, they actually had to fur out this wall. Instead of a two by four wall, they made it a little bit bigger, which is convenient for me because it allows me to drop wire or whatever I need to down this wall all the way down to the basement. I don't really know if this camera is picking up down there. So I've got the wire running all the way down there. And down in the basement, I drilled up. There's a, there's a hole down there in the floor. I drilled up from the basement. We got the wire now. It comes through the floor there. It comes over here, down the wall. And here it is, hanging down into the panel. The instructions, they call for a GFCI ground fault circuit interrupter these things are pretty expensive they're like 15 to 20 dollars so i actually had one of these laying around and i have a cover so that's good for me i'm gonna go ahead and put this in by the way i don't know if i talked about it but this is a 15 amp and i'm gonna run this off a 15 amp breaker this particular unit it's only supposed to draw about 1.6 amps i think I'll probably put it on the screen here. I, I don't remember, but it, it was super low. It was only like 1.6 amps. I think 15 amp is gonna be plenty because this is gonna be on a breaker, on a circuit completely by itself. And of course I'm using 14 gauge. That's uh, the Romex. Yeah, this is just a white, it's 14 two. You got a black wire, white wire, and a ground in there. And I just got me a little piece sticking out of here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wire this thing up, stick it in there. I got the outlet in. This thing is old and dirty, but it was free. I had it laying around. I'm gonna hook this down here on this bottom one. I've got this little mini breaker, this little half size breaker. This is a 20 amp and I only need a 15. So I went and bought one. I think this little half breaker was like $5, not too bad. So I'm just gonna pull this one out and put this 15 because this one is not being used right now. All right, got my 15 turned off. Stick it in there, push it down. I'm gonna go ahead and strip this back and hook it up in here. We got this breaker and the wire all hooked together right there on the bottom. So now we're gonna turn it on. I got my meter here. I'm gonna run up to the attic and make sure the outlet works. Back up here in the attic, let's see if this outlet is working. It's on AC. Stick. First we go hot to ground. Look at that, 121 volts, looks good. Hot to my neutral, 121 volts. We're looking good. Okay, the outlet is in, it's ready to go. Now we can start working on the duct work. First, I'm gonna put this cover on real quick. I've got the panel cover back on and don't forget to label ERV. We're gonna start running the duct work for this ERV. I've got the owner's manual here. Honeywell recommends exhaust the stale air from the bathroom, kitchen, and laundry room. That's what I wanna do. So the first one we're gonna do is in here in the kitchen. I'm gonna, I got an eight by eight return boot. I think that's what it's called, a 
return boot. Anyway, so in the kitchen, it's actually gonna go right here. When we first built the house, we thought we were gonna have like a four foot fluorescent light or something right here. So that's actually an electric box right there. But I'm gonna pull that out and put my return grill, the, uh, where it's gonna be sucking the air out of the kitchen, I'm gonna put it right there. Up in the attic, that pipe right there, that is the hood vent for the kitchen. And this right here is the electric box. My kitchen island sits like right down here. That is the box. Uh, at one time we were gonna have a light hanging there, but I'm not gonna do that anymore. So I'm gonna make sure that there's no power on this line and I'm just gonna pull that out. And then we're gonna put this in its place. Okay, I got the uh, electrical box out. I took this two by four out of there too. Little cross piece there that the box was nailed onto. So now I've got to cut my hole. I'm gonna go down in the kitchen and cut the hole. I've got my square hole cut. I'm gonna put this down in the hole now, and I'm gonna cut a few two by fours to put around this thing so I can screw this to it, make sure it's nice and secure. I got my two by four pieces cut. These aren't screwed in yet. So I'm gonna put them all the way around here, screw them in. That'll also give me something to screw this box. I'll go, just like I did for the bathroom, go down in the kitchen and screw through the side, the inside of this box, screw into the two by four. And then when I put the vent covers on, then I'll be screwing, instead of just into the drywall, I'll be screwing up into the two by four. I've got all of these two by fours screwed in now, tied in together. I'm not even gonna screw this boot into one of these two by fours. This thing is in here really tight. It's not going anywhere. The kitchen return is down there. I'm gonna run the duct work down here. And this is where the next return is gonna be. This is actually my laundry room right here. We wanna pull the moist air, the humid air out of the laundry room. I'm not gonna cut a separate hole. What I'm gonna do is get rid of this. This is obviously the HVAC where it's blowing air into the laundry room, I'm gonna get rid of this line. I have looked it up and it, it doesn't seem like it's a requirement that you have an HVAC line blowing air into the laundry room. I really don't think I need one. We're gonna cut this apart, just put a coupling or something in here, get rid of this piece, and then I'll bring this duct work from the kitchen down here, grab the laundry room, and keep heading down. This is my little laundry room. Haven't had a chance to build any cabinets or anything in here. And actually, we're, we're gonna be tearing out this wall. There's a pantry right over here. I think we're actually gonna be tearing down this wall, just redoing this whole area. But there's the vent right there. Currently, that is HVAC. It blows the air and the heat into this tiny little room. And we have had that vent closed forever, ever since we moved in here. So I do not need to have air blowing into here. So this will become a return pulling air out of here. I will cut the bottom of this door off at least another half inch, maybe even an inch. We always have the door closed. Every time we're doing laundry, you got the washer and dryer running. We always keep the door closed. So I want to leave a gap big enough underneath the door for the air to flow and get sucked up into the vent. I've got the duct work taken apart now. I had to peel all this tape off of here, cut some straps off. They had a T, or no, this is a Y. They had this Y in here, so I'm just gonna remove the Y. And I cut me a piece of my, my metal duct here. Just made me a little coupling. I'm gonna put that up there and just tape it up real good. Connect these two. That goes over to my master bathroom. My coupling did not work out to patch up this HVAC line here. Apparently, so this is a six inch and this is an eight inch. I did not know that. My little coupling I made is a six inch, so I, I could not use this to put these together. I had to put the T or the Y back in there and just kinda, you know, it used to be upside down there and hooked to here. So I just taped up the end and it's been like that for a few days because I was working on this at like 10 o'clock at night after work one day. Anyway, today we got a reducer. So this is an eight inch to a six inch reducer. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna pull this Y back out of here, 
get this reducer put in there and I'll go ahead and get rid of this little piece of duct work. Yeah, flexible duct work, whatever. So then we can uh, run our duct down here and tie into the laundry room. I've got my reducer on here. Now I'm just gonna pull the insulation back over this, tape around it. We got this piece of duct work off of there. So now I can attach the laundry room to this duct work to the ERV. I've got the original HVAC all put back together, taped up, hanging nice. So we've started running the ductwork now. And I've got the first piece, long piece here hung up. We're gonna go ahead, put this two foot piece, tie it into the laundry room, and then I'll hook up the kitchen down there. That uh, boot, I think that's a register boot. So I had to crimp it. One of the reason, even though I'm saving money probably by doing a DIY install, having to buy tools like this, a crimper, now this is from the factory, but you know, it, it crimps the it crimps the duct work so it'll fit inside the next piece. Now this thing right here, it was like, I think it was 35 or $38, pretty expensive. So that boot right there, I had to crimp it pretty easy. You just go around it and just keep squeezing and basically it'll end up looking like one of these factory edges. So now my two foot piece will fit over it. Before I crimped it, the boot, and the end of this two foot piece, it was basically the same size. I've got this two foot piece screwed in here. We're just using these little self tapping screws. I've got this little nut driver, quarter inch nut driver. I'm trying to put four screws in every joint if I can get to it with the drill. Sometimes when you get down in here, you can't get the drill in there. And then I'm gonna go back over every joint with the tape. The, the HVAC tape like you see here. So this is the return and it's gonna be pulling air. So this duck boot, this vent boot is inside this piece. That's why I had to crimp that. It's inside there. I want the air to flow in here. This pipe is inside this T, right? Cause it's gonna go this way and down to the ERV. That duct work here, it's inside this T. So wherever the air is flowing, I want it to go inside the next joint. I think it's gonna be easier to uh, seal up the air that way. That just seems the right way to do it. Working above the kitchen now, I've got my two foot piece in here. I've got the 90. I don't have it screwed in yet, but I've gotta have a short piece right here. So this is actually the little coupling that I cut earlier for the HVAC. It didn't work out for that, but it's gonna be perfect for this. The way I'm getting these little short pieces, well, first you have to buy another tool. Now I got the Linux brand, which is a, I guess it's a pretty good brand. This thing was $18 and these are called aviation snips. You know, I'm buying these five foot pieces of duct work. I measure off what I need with a tape measure, use a marker, you may can see Probably not because the lighting is terrible, but there's some black on here. Basically just marking it off with a permanent marker and cutting it with these snips. It's a pain. I, I've got little cuts all over my hands. I should probably be wearing gloves, but I'm not. But you just cut around there and you almost have to flatten this thing out. It's kind of a pain to cut this off, but you flatten it out a little bit, cut off the piece you need. And of course it'll roll back up, uh, I guess metal kind of has a memory to it so now i'm going to use my little crimper thing i'm going to go around one edge of this to crimp the end of it because just like that's crimped this is going to go over that but this end needs to go inside here put this together screw everything together tape it up got the end of it crimped beautiful now it should fit right into that pipe there one good thing about using these straps i guess it's better than the the metal banding I'm constantly moving these straps, adjusting them up and down. I basically just hung this long piece of ductwork up and I've probably moved it four or five times. As I put that together, I had to adjust it and then I leveled it out. I actually just took the strap off to, to be able to move it some to put this together. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw this together and then I'll just uh, put my strap back on there. The attic is on the other side of that wall over there. I'm gonna be pulling air out of this bathroom 
and I'm going to do it right there. So right now, that is the normal bath exhaust fan, but I'm going to get rid of that. It doesn't really work anyway because the house is sealed up too tight. I'm going to pull that out, put one of those eight inch square boxes there. We are on top of the upstairs bathroom. That is the exhaust fan that I was just turning on. I'm going to be getting rid of that. We're going to be putting this eight inch square box right in there. And then I have to figure out, I'm going to either run the ductwork down there or I can go back that way. The ERV is over there. We got the box out. This was the bath fan. Here's part of it here. So that is the vent. It goes over there to the exterior wall. For now, I've just got it taped up. But I'm not going to need that vent anymore. I'll seal it up. I'll deal with that later in another video. And here's the power. So the switch is still hooked up to this line. I've just got it capped off. I'm just going to leave that sitting up here for now. I'll figure out. Uh, we may end up using that switch for something else. We may put another light in the shower. Maybe a light over the shower. I don't know what we're going to do. So my box will not fit in the hole right now. I'm going to have to cut this hole out a little bit bigger. So I'm going to do that from down there. Yeah, that's the bathroom. You see the toilet down there. We got the box in. So now I'm going to screw it from in here in the bathroom. I'm going to use a couple drywall screws that I've got laying around. These are inch and 5 8. I got two screws. It seems to be uh, on there pretty solid. I'll come back later and put this cover on there. We finally got things started. Got this little short piece in here. Got my 90. The ERV is down there. So right now I'm going to go and put the air duct sealer all over this. I've got it screwed together. Well, I'm going to put a little bit of tape on here first around a couple of spots and then I'm just going to cover everything in the air duct sealer. Even the 90, I don't want any air leaking. I've got the air duct sealer or air duct sealant all over this thing. So it may not look pretty, but who who's ever going to see it? Nobody. We got the ERV and there it is coming from the bathroom, the upstairs bathroom. In my master bathroom, we're going to do the same thing as we did upstairs in the bathroom. We're going to get rid of the exhaust fan or the exhaust vent. We're going to tie that onto the ERV. We are in the attic right above the master bathroom. This is the bath exhaust fan that we were just looking at. We're going to get rid of this and we're going to tie it into the ERV here. Where this bath fan goes outside, that's the exterior wall. We're going to end up cutting this hole bigger and that's where I'm going to exhaust the ERV at. So we'll be working on that later in the video. We have made some great progress on this ERV. I'm pretty much done with the return air duct. The only thing I have left, I've got to put the mastic or the air duct sealant on all the joints. I'm going to do that later after I finish all the air duct. I don't want to keep wasting these little paint brushes because if they sit around for a while, they dry out. So I'll just wait till the end of the project and do all of the duct work at one time. So we start down there in the kitchen. We're pulling air out of the kitchen, pull it down here. We pick up the laundry room, pulling air down here, just hitting a 90 right here, coming up to the ERV. And the upstairs bathroom, right? This is the upstairs. That's coming from the upstairs bathroom, and it just comes down here. And there's just a T. It's kind of hard to show it right here, but there's a T right here, and so the upstairs bathroom just comes and tees right into here. And then of course, my master bathroom right here. I didn't really show this, but I did it just like the kitchen and just like the upstairs bathroom. Got some, uh, put the boot in there, got some two by fours in there. Okay, ran the duct work up, a couple of 90s, and I teed it, you know, that's the line coming from the bathroom. Just teed it into there. So all the returns should be hooked up. Now the directions for this ERV say that you should use about 16 inches of some kind of vinyl duct. It's supposed to help with noise. I guess if you connect the metal directly to this, it makes some kind of noise, of course. 
I don't know if you can hear that, but anyway, so that's what we got. This is like maybe 16 or 17 inches. It just kind of worked out that way. Right now, I've just got some tape on there. I'll probably go ahead and get me some big zip ties and put it on there. If you look on my ERV, it says right here, exhaust air from home. You can look in the directions also, and it has a little diagram where to hook things up. Hooking this up to the ERV, pretty simple. Just follow the directions. I like this one's pretty cool. It's got these little plastic collar things. There's these little tabs right there. There's a couple of these little tabs. I don't know if you can see it in there. But this flexible duct, it's got this little metal rings, little metal wire in there. So you just push the duct onto here and then hook, you hook the metal over behind the little tab there. There's a four, yeah, four tabs on here. So once you hook the little metal ring over there, it's on there, very secure. And then they give you in the little install kit, they give you some big zip ties. So this thing's not going anywhere. So now we're gonna run the supply air where it's blowing air back into the house and it hooks up down here. It says, uh, fresh air to home. So I'm gonna get started working on that. I will check back in with you. We are finally starting to work on the supply duct and I'm in my master bedroom. I've got the first register box in. So we're using the same eight inch square, same square boxes. I'm gonna talk about that more in detail later in the video. So that'll be for the HVAC, blowing the air conditioning and the heat, and this will be the ERV blowing the fresh air. Uh, this is a little attic space right above my bedroom. You can see that's the HVAC line that supplies that vent. And that is my new square box for the ERV. I'm gonna be running the ductwork up into the attic. And uh, of course I'm taking my time. You can see the two by fours. I'm trying to uh, wrap all of these boxes. I think I showed the one in the kitchen, but all the boxes I'm doing the same thing, wrapping them very tight, screwing everything together. Now I had to cut the hole in this floor earlier and this was really time consuming, just trying to get this all figured out where I want it and to make sure it looks uh, pretty good down in the bedroom lined up with that vent it's raining pretty hard outside so right now this is above my living room and i'm running the supply duct and this is what i've been running into this is an electric line right here probably going to the outlets on my, my front porch is like over there so it's probably going to the front wall and, and supplying some outlets either to the front porch or the front wall in the living room Anyway, this line here, it's right in the way. I've been fighting this all throughout this project. If I was putting in this ductwork during the building, the construction of this house, it would be easier to move these lines out of the way. That's another reason this project is taking so long. I, I want this eight inch box you know, right in here in the middle. I'm doing the best I can to put it in here in some of these areas because of the electric lines. It is a beautiful Saturday to be working outside. We're gonna go ahead today and put these vents in. I've got two of these, one for the exhaust, one for the intake, six inch. This pipe, that thing looks huge. So I had to rent this boom lift. It's a 35 foot boom lift. I have my brother's 24 foot extension ladder and I can barely reach these vents here. This is where the exhaust is gonna be, but the intake is gonna be way up here. So using this thing, it should be safer, hopefully faster. I don't like working off of ladders. The yard is sloped right here, but this thing is self-leveling. I've been so busy on the ERV, I've been really neglecting my yard out here. I've got this thing plugged in. The battery's low. The guy told me when I rented it, the previous user had just brought it in. They didn't have time to charge it. We got the truck unhooked and we got this thing leveled up. It's pretty easy. This thing self levels. You just push the button down and it levels out. We are in the attic and this is the vent that's gonna become the exhaust vent. Right, it used to be the bathroom fan, which was right here. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this flex duck off of here. I just took the tape off, got this flex duck off of there. So we're gonna go outside and pull this. This is a four inch, we're gonna pull it out. Well, here we are up on the lift and I do not like being up high. This is the middle vent, used to be the bathroom vent. Now it's gonna be the exhaust for the ERV. So we're gonna unscrew this. Got my drill here. I've got the screws out and I've moved a little bit away from this thing because that is a serious wasp nest in there. Ew. So scared. And look at this, the, the silver pipe, which is normally attached to this outside unit, it's like in the dang wall. Okay, I'm gonna have to figure this out. The next thing I've gotta do, I got my vent here. I'm gonna mark my hole and I'm gonna cut it out. I don't even know what's going on with this, you see? It's like when they framed the house, they put the metal tube for the vent and then bent it in. And then they put some plywood sheathing on and then they put the plastic thing way on the outside. I, well then, I mean, okay, if this thing is sucking out moisture and humidity, like it's getting all this moist and damp. I, I don't even know what the heck they were thinking. And I can already see that one. That one's the same way. They did all my vents that way. I've never seen somebody put a vent, bathroom vent in that way. And I don't understand the reasoning behind it. I'm having to take a screwdriver and just pry this stuff out of here when I pulled this front plastic cover off this whole silver thing should have just slid right out of here I finally got the metal pipe out of there the vent pipe now you can see I've got the six inch pipe marked so I'm gonna have to cut this out now well it's right about here that I must have stepped on my GoPro after sitting it down and I broke the audio adapter so for the next few minutes of this video, I'm just going to have to do a voiceover. The hole is not very pretty, but we finally got it cut in here. I've also got my four holes pre-drilled. And now we're going to put some silicone on it. This tube was like $7. It's made for outdoors. It's white, non-paintable, which I think is supposed to be the better kind of silicone. I don't care about painting it. I just want it to seal up. I think I'm gonna put it around here and I'm gonna put it all around the back of this thing. I've only got two of these vents to put in so I can use the whole tube if I have to. Half of it on this one and half of it on the one up there. Cutting this hole was an absolute nightmare. I thought I had the proper tools, some kind of carbide blade for my jigsaw. Cutting hardy board, or hardy plank it is tough it burns up blades and this wall is pretty thick in here I put silicone in between this vent and the wall you can see it squeezing out everywhere I want to keep the rain from coming down behind this thing and going into the wall I've got the silicone smoothed out as best I can I hate using silicone it is very hard to work and smooth out it's not the prettiest but I think it's sealed up very good. It's got a little metal screen on here. Hopefully that's going to keep the birds and the critters out. I already had a bird try to build a nest down there in my dryer vent. We are about to get started on the intake, the vent that's going to be way up there. So far this lift has been working good on this hill. It feels very stable. We got the other vent in. This is the fresh air intake. This one was really easy to do. I cut this hole in less than 10 minutes. One other thing I had to do on that intake was remove this. But these right here, they came from Lowe's 
they are made for an exhaust or an intake. So the exhaust has this little door, little backflow preventer, but you have to remove this for the intake. I think these vents look pretty good. I hate that they're so high though. I wish they could be lower. I'm probably gonna have to uh, rent this thing, this lift again sometime to check these out, to clean them out. That's the main reason I don't like them being so high, just so I could access them, check them out, clean them. Yesterday we put the two vents in the outside wall. That's the one that's up tall, the fresh air vent. There, the other one's down there. You probably can't see it. There it is under that board. Right now I just have a grocery bag on that one because there's no little door. There's a little screen on the outside of that thing, but it's not gonna keep bees or little critters from getting in the house. So I just taped a grocery bag over it for now. We're gonna go ahead and hook up these outside vents to the ERV. The rest of the house is all hooked up. All the duct work is rigid duct work. But the directions say that these outside vents are supposed to be hooked up with insulated duct work. So that's what we're gonna do. Someone recommended to me that I run the rigid duct work on these outside vents, it would increase the airflow or the efficiency or something. And then you can just put insulation over the ductwork. I was gonna do that, but I'm just, I'm tired of working on this project. This rigid ductwork takes a lot more time. I think this is gonna be really fast. I've been working on this thing for over, I don't know, maybe like two months. I'm ready to be done with it. And I'm really close to the end. This top vent is for the fresh air and it's gonna hook up right here. It says, fresh air from outside. That's just a piece of cardboard I have. I just haven't taken it out yet. And this is what it looks like on the inside. This is that six inch vent, the one that's up tall that we put in yesterday. I have jumped ahead a few days and I have finished the ERV. Hopefully I'm done. So you can see I've got the soft duct. This one right here, that is gonna be the fresh air. That's the very tall vent outside. It's gonna be sucking in air into the ERV. This one right here is gonna be the exhaust where it's pulling the air out of the house. It's a little dark over there, but that was the, uh, the outside vent that was really hard to cut into the wall. And we have those little collars I showed earlier. I've got it taped onto the collar. I've got it zip tied on there. And then you pull the insulation over it, tape it again. That is the exhaust vent. So it's the same thing, hooking it up to the ERV. You pull the vinyl duct over the metal part that was sticking in the house, tape it on there. I've got some zip ties on there. Then you pull the insulation over it. Maybe you've noticed all the stuff all over the duct work. That is the air duct sealant. This is what I got from Home Depot, Master Flow Water-Based Air Duct Sealant. This tub was $27. It's almost empty. I have put this stuff everywhere. Now I call these things 90s, but you know, you can make different angles out of them. 22, 45, 90, whatever you need. But all over the 90s, the T's, I think I got a Y up there. Everywhere, I've got air duct sealant on everything. Even these five foot pieces, when you roll them up, hook them together, and you put tape down the seam, I put air duct sealant everywhere, even all over that tape there. And you can see here, I've just got it I'm putting it everywhere, everywhere I can get it. I've never used it before, and really I only have access to what they have at Lowe's and Home Depot. But I am slopping this stuff on here pretty dang thick. But when it dries, it's very thin. When I'm putting it on, it looks thick and well covered and you cannot see through it. But when it dries, it dries very thin. Now maybe you can see this is the part that I did yesterday. It's already dry. Now you can see the tape through it. So I don't know if that is because I'm using some cheap type of air duct sealant. But I think what I'm going to do here in the next few weeks, I'm going to get another tub of this stuff and I'm going to go all over everything again, which is going to be miserable, honestly. I mean, I'm crawling around in the attic. I've probably got at least eight hours, maybe 10 hours in just putting the air duct sealant on here. If it was new construction and I was standing on a ladder and all this drywall stuff wasn't in the way, I think you could really go through and slap it on pretty quick. But I'm having to crawl around, get into some really tight areas. So it's taken an entire week, a couple hours a night to put this air duct sealant on here. 
I've got all of the supply duct run so I'm going to go ahead and show you some of that like I said before this right here that's what the directions say that you don't connect the the rigid or the metal duct directly to the ERV you're supposed to use like the vinyl duct this vinyl duct I actually got that from inside of this so I had to buy a 25 foot piece of the flexible duct I didn't need all of it so I just pulled this out of the uh, flexible duct there the supply it is all fed up over the second floor and then it drops down into some different places so it starts here and it just curves around and then it curves again and it's that one right there that lower one it just goes up over the second floor and we'll climb up there and I'll show you where it goes we are on top of the second floor now up in the attic space the ERV is right down there and this is where the line comes up the duct work this duct work that I'm showing you now this is the supply this is the duct work that is blowing the fresh air from the ERV out to the house where you see this red arrow that is the return that is coming from the upstairs bathroom that's the duct work that is sucking the air out of the bathroom and pulling it down to the ERV splits off in a Y now I'm gonna go ahead and say I ran all six inch duct work I know that for regular HVAC duct work they'll usually start bigger and get smaller and smaller I didn't really design this this system I just I use six inch for everything so I don't know if that's gonna be a problem I don't know if I'm gonna regret doing that later I don't know I'll figure it out so we come down here we split off to a Y it runs over there now this feeds a bedroom that's a bedroom and then that rolls down and goes down through a front attic space and hits my master bedroom this part of the Y it goes over and all the way over to the other side of the house it's hard to see with all the duct work here but the Y is right over there so it comes down here bends a little bit and keeps on running all the way down to the other side of the house and this one I showed earlier this is the upstairs bathroom this is the return the air getting sucked out of the house and this is the duct work going down to the other end of the house that's where we were down there that's where the ERV is down that way so that's the bathroom that the return that's pulling the air out of the bathroom and this is the supply blowing air down to the other end of the house it hits a T right here that goes down through a front attic space and goes to the vent in my living room then it goes down here and just turns down and this blows fresh air into an upstairs bedroom now for the most part I've been using this uh, nylon strap to hang the ductwork but there's a couple spots like up here I've got some metal strap and I've actually got the metal strap screwed into the ductwork just because of this long incline here and the weight of the duct I just kind of felt like that was better the nylon stuff is a lot easier to use when you're actually hanging and having to move it around and adjust it you can see there's one there there's one on that duct over there you can't it's behind here you can't see it now that we're done installing the ERV I'm going to show you what some of the vents look like now that I've got all the grills put on this is the uh, return that's in the kitchen now, the return is what is pulling the air out of the house to the ERV all of the returns except for the laundry room are the 8 inch square and it's just a standard return grill like you would find on an HVAC system in my messy laundry room this is the only one that's not an 8 inch square and of course earlier in the video you saw that I changed this from an HVAC vent blowing air and I basically hooked it to the ERV so this is actually a return at some point I will probably put a regular return grill on this for now it's just got the standard HVAC vent is that a register I think that's a register it's got the standard HVAC register on it and I just have it in the open position in the upstairs bathroom we've got the same 8 inch square 
return grill used to be the uh, bath fan now it's the return pulling air out of here going to the ERV and it looks just like this in my master bathroom got the same type of grill 8 inch square grill on there now we're going to look at some of the supply grills I use the same 8 inch box for the supply this is in my living room I also use the same 8 inch square return grill for the supply so right there you got the HVAC that was already here that's blowing the air conditioning and the heat and the square that is my ERV blowing the fresh air into the living room and the supply in the master bedroom you know that's the HVAC blowing the air conditioning and the heat and this is the supply line blowing the air from the ERV in the upstairs bedroom so this is your HVAC blowing the air conditioning and the heat and this 8 inch square that is your ERV supply that's blowing the fresh air into the room another bedroom upstairs so we got your HVAC blowing the air conditioning and the heat and this is what I just put in the ERV I tried looking up online I tried looking on YouTube and just on the internet to see what do the ERV boxes look like as far as the returns and the supplies what do the vents look like I couldn't find anything so I thought I would keep it simple and I just used the 8 inch square boxes for everything everything except the laundry room because it was already there and as far as the return grills I used those on the supply also one because they were cheaper those return grills were like seven dollars each and if you actually bought the the vent cover that would move and you could change the direction those were like 15 to 20 dollars each times all the what four I think there's four supplies in here right now anyway it was a lot cheaper to just put returns on all of them and really I don't even know that it matters that much hopefully the ERV is going to be pulling the air the supply is going to be blowing it and it's just going to be moving through the house I feel like it doesn't really matter if the air is actually pointed in a direction or not was it worth spending the extra money I don't know we'll see I can always change it add those later if I want to another reason I went with the square is because my house is a square technically it's a cube it's a two-story cube but the floor plan is a square so I just thought having the square boxes would kind of fit in with the uh, the squareness of my house and the sharp angles and everything I have seen some pictures where there's round ducts but not round ducts, round vents but to me that looks like something you would see in a drop ceiling like in a commercial building or something or maybe in something in the 1970s I don't know I just I didn't think round would look that good in my house because everything else is square this is about where we're going to end this video the ERV has been installed I'm done with everything I've got it plugged in and I can turn it on and it actually works what I have to do now is balance this thing that's going to be in another video I'm not sure how long it's going to take me to figure it out I bought this uh, cheap manometer from Amazon I spent about $50 on this thing and I've been playing around with it this thing has a couple of videos on it It has great reviews I think it probably works really good I just don't know how to use it and then of course I spent a hundred dollars on this thing this is a pedo tube I'll be talking about balancing this thing in another video hopefully coming very soon I'm gonna return this thing to Amazon and there's one that's more expensive I've been watching some videos on in order to balance this thing you have to do a little bit of math and I just don't know what I'm doing so you can get one of these that actually does all the calculations for you I think I'm just gonna do that I'm gonna send this one back I'm gonna buy the other one I'm happy to be done with this project as soon as I get done with the balancing I will put a link to that video in the description some good news before we end this video I tried to use the manometer that I showed you earlier I think the ERV might be balanced it's probably not I really don't know I'm gonna return that one and I've actually got another one ordered maybe it's smarter it actually shows you the CFM it does all the calculations for you in the meantime while I'm waiting on that to come in I've got the ERV running it's too early right now to know if it is going to fix a bunch of our problems that we had because of the spray foam I will be covering that in a future video I really do think the house feels better 
inside. It feels fresher. It smells fresher. The upstairs was the worst. It didn't really smell bad or funky, but it kind of had like a, a spray foam smell to it. it. It just, it didn't smell good. It did not smell fresh before. And now I really think it smells better. Maybe it's all in my head because I spent so much money on this ERV and I really want it to work, but I really think it is helping. So I still have to actually figure out how to balance this thing properly as soon as that new manometer comes in. I also have to figure out how long you gotta run this ERV because I don't think they're supposed to run 24 hours a day. I guess it depends on how much you need it. I've seen some people just run it 20 to 30 minutes per hour. I'll be talking all about that in another video coming up. I'll also be showing how I balance this thing. Hopefully I can figure it out. If you made it this far through this long installation video, thank you for watching.